So um, what we're going to say, if I take a lead on the airway, Saturn's going to take a lead on managing the hemodynamics while we're proning, and we've got people either side, so two ideally as a minimum, um, but we may need more for kind of larger patients. He's my standard size, so we should be okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through our checklist, so I'm going to uh, ring the nurse in the room. enough sedation and the patient's currently paralysed. Great, and you've got some uh, emergency drugs available, some metaraminol and some dilute adrenaline? Yeah, okay, and you've got enough noradrenaline or adrenaline uh, as you um, need. Can I check, you've taken the anchor fast off and the tube is taped? Great, um, you've suctioned recently, was there much in the oropharynx or in the airway? Okay, um, you've got closed suction and some clamps? Okay. Uh, and if you could just put him on 100% oxygen and uh, just to check are all of his lines sutured, including the arterial line. Okay. Could you stop anything that's not essential? So uh, things like antibiotic infusions or uh, kind of infusions of potassium or magnesium replacement. So just sedation and vasoactives. Okay, great. And can I just check as well, um, you've done eye care and has he got a stoma or anything that needs to be changed before we go in? Okay, fine. And uh, cleaned and washed before we go in? Okay, that was done this morning, perfect. Can I just check the NG tube, uh, the NG feed has been stopped? Okay, and have you aspirated? Has he got any chest drains? No, okay, all right. And can I just check as well, you've got enough length on all of your infusions? Uh, so if lines in the neck, the lines in the neck, great. So that should fine, be fine. That's great. Thanks. Okay. Uh, trolley going inside. If you just let me know, we've got them. Um, so he's got a size eight ET tube. Have we got a size eight available? Yes. Okay. And we've got a size seven available as well. Yes. Okay. Um, we've got a Mac four laryngoscope, which yes. is there. Can I just open it and check that the bulb is working? That's great. Okay, um, he's got a slide sheet in already um, and when we get in we'll ask Holly to take off his anterior electrodes. Uh, two sheets. Yes. Okay, and working section we've already asked. Clamp for the ET tube. Yes. Okay, so I think that's everything that we need to do before we go in. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put in our... Okay guys, so um, we're all appropriately PPE'd and we've kind of donned using the PhD guidance. What we're going to do now is going to go through the lock sip for this procedure and just check that we haven't missed anything. Firstly, does everyone know each other? Anyone happy yeah. with their role? Yeah. Okay, so um, I'm the consultant for the day but my fellow consultant is available and knows that we're about to do this procedure as does the senior nurse. There are no contraindications, so he's not got a spinal injury. He's not particularly hemodynamically unstable, so I'm happy that we can go ahead. So, reintubation equipment, is that available? Yes. Okay. So, his eyes, we're going to pad and lubricate. I could just have some tape if that's okay. That's great. I'm going to ask you just to pop a bit of tape just there, just kind of here. That's great. Okay, so he has an OG, um, we've aspirated that, and I'm happy that it's at the same length that it was before, okay? Um, essential infusion, so he's just on some NORAD and some propofol, and I'm happy there's enough length to the line that's in his neck. Uh, he doesn't have any chest strains. Um, are there any areas of skin breakdown that we need to look at? No, no. okay, all right. Um, so uh, he's had his daily mouthwash in daily care, he doesn't have a stoma or anything that needs to be dressed or protected. And he's had a wash earlier this morning by the nurses when they came on shift. So has anybody got any concerns about proceeding at this point? Okay, so that's fine. That's our pre-check lock sip done. Okay. Yep, so the sliding sheets are already placed. Okay. So what we're going to do firstly is we're going to put pillows over the chest, the eyelet crests and the knees. That's great. And if I could ask you just to pop the sheet up. Okay. So Simon, in a moment, what I'm going to need you to do is I'm going to need you to pause the ventilator. Yeah. Okay. So everyone's happy if they could roll. Exactly. Perfect. And 
Simon, if you could pause the ventilator for me. Yeah, pause. Okay, I'm happy that's stopped. I'm going to clamp the tube and I'm going to disconnect here and place that into an angle piece so that it's sealed. Okay, all right. So, the first movement will be to slide to the left of the bed on slide. So the patient will face the ventilator, okay? Everyone ready? On slide, ready, brace, slide. Okay, the next command will be to roll over to 90 degrees on roll. Everyone ready? Yeah. Ready, brace, roll. Okay, and then if I could get the people on my left to put their hands on the top. People on my right to put their hands on the bottom. That's great. And then we're going to complete the prone on roll. Ready, brace, roll. Good. Well done. Okay. So, Simon, in a moment, I'm going to need you to restart the ventilator. Okay, so I've got a good seal. Check my connections. I'm unclamped. Okay, and I'm looking to see that there's capnography. Okay, if I could ask you not to get the monitoring back on, yeah. that would be okay. And we're just checking that there's any hemodynamic problems, Simon? No. no. Good. Okay, all right, so now we just need to put his in an appropriate position, okay? So we're going to put the arms in the swimmer's position. So if I could get you to put the hand facing the head up. That's great. That's great. Okay. The catheter, where's that? Okay, so that needs to go down to the bottom of the bed. I'll just check that the genitalia are free. I'm happy with the lines in the neck, okay? And we're happy that there's enough padding on the iliac crest and the knees. Good, all right, fine. So next we're gonna do our post-procedure checks. So the ET tube is at the same position. We've got our monitoring back on. Ventilator, Simon, are you happy that the settings are yep, appropriate? The same. Okay, lines are still checked. Chest strains, we weren't any. So particular pressure areas to check, we need to check that the ET isn't on his lips, which it's not. There's no pressure on the eyes, which I'm happy with the padding is not. The NG tube or the OG tube is not pressing against the nose, that's fine. Catheter we've done, and the pillows are checked correctly. Okay, so what we now need to do is take out the slide sheet. Mm -hmm. So if I could ask you to um, just pull that out from this side. Yeah. Okay. That's great. And then what I need you to do is just put the, the bed up to 30 degrees so the head is this way, using the far controller. That's perfect. Okay. That's great. Well done, team. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Proning should be performed uh, by a sufficiently big team. Um, if you've got any concerns about doing this procedure, then please discuss with an intensive care consultant prior to continuing. Um, make sure you follow the appropriate donning and doffing guidelines, uh, which we have not reproduced here for the sake of brevity, but essentially dispose of any equipment inside the room that's been contaminated and ensure appropriate cleaning of anything that you take out. If you have any concerns about proning a patient, please discuss with an intensive care consultant and they'll be able to advise you. Um, please ensure that you have adequate members of staff for this procedure. Um, although we recommend a minimum of five with a runner outside, for larger patients you may need more people. Um, and also uh, if you have uh, follow the appropriate donning and doffing guidance that's uh, available within the trust. Thank you.